So thank you again for joining this webinar session. Again, my name is Marwan. I'm pre-sales consultant at EXO. And uh, we have an interesting agenda for you today. But uh, as always, I would like to begin with uh, introducing the EXO company and solution. And then I would like to show you how you can install the on-premise edition of EXO platform uh, on your machine so you can test it and uh, play around with it on your own. Uh, next, we will have a functional demonstration during which I will uh, have a run through the out-of-the-box features of EXO platform. And I say out-of-the-box because EXO, as you may know, is highly extensible. And uh, today we'll show you one of the main or one of the most straightforward ways to extend your platform, which is through the uh, EXO community add-ons. And then we will have a look at the, uh, first of course, I will show you the add-on manager and a couple of examples. Uh, two of my favorite uh, EXO add-ons, and then we will uh, address any questions uh, that you may have, as always. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to type them in, and I'll address them near the end. Uh, a colleague of mine is also plugged in, so he will be typing in some answers uh, to your questions as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's, let's begin. So who is EXO Platform? Uh, EXO Platform is an open source software editor company founded in 2003. Uh, we have a headquarters in San Francisco in the United States, uh, but with strong roots in France. Uh, and uh, we offer an enterprise-grade social collaboration platform, which comes with a strong portal foundation and some collaboration, social collaboration features. Uh, we have an, an on-premise solution, a cloud service, as well as mobile applications available. Uh, we also have a nice online community, uh, the Expo Tribe. Uh, we are happy to also have built uh, an established value in this field with a strong uh, list of references. So in terms of uh, mission statement, what is our mission? Uh, our mission is to uh, deliver a modern way for companies to uh, collaborate in the workplace. Uh, we live in the social world, so we want to integrate a social layer, a strong social layer uh, in this, uh, and offer an enterprise-grade social collaboration technology that is accessible to all businesses, no matter their size or resources. Uh, so that pretty much summarizes our job. Our job is to help businesses adopt this technology and to give them an open source alternative, which uh, works great, which is flexible, which you can build on and extend, uh, but also which is more affordable. So uh, just a quick look uh, at some of the main problems that uh, we aim to solve. Uh, we have organizational problems, uh, such as businesses having multiple units in different uh, geographic locations, uh, people in different places, uh, traveling employees, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, we want to provide these people with uh, a solution that can easily connect all of them. Uh, so. It's safe to assume that providing external access for users is very much possible on Excel platform. And in fact, security in this regard and having a strong access control and strong permission management is an important aspect in Excel platform. So you have also communication and collaboration problem that, uh, that we solve, uh, like uh, the heavy reliance on classical mediums like email, uh, which, in our experience, there is nothing better to solve this kind of problem than a social stream, social groups and spaces, and also real-time communication and collaboration to solve that problem, uh, to get rid of any unnecessary email clutter. Uh, and also, we want to help people adopt this uh, social platform as easy as possible, with as little time invested in the process as possible. Uh, we also looked at centralize your business information, your business applications and assets. Uh, we do this by putting everything in one place, in one cohesive interface. Uh, we do not see an intranet solution as a separate addition to your arsenal of tools, but rather as something to glue everything together in one centralized uh, platform. Uh, we want to also maintain a familiar user experience in an intuitive in interface. So uh, uh, obviously another problem that we solve is 
the fact that people uh, have been relying on traditional hierarchical systems in businesses. Uh, we want to modernize this by offering horizontal solution where people can collaborate and work better. And uh, EXO has opted for a more user-centric approach. Uh, this is why it's classified as a user experience platform, a UXP. And this becomes an advantage in things like uh, personal documents, inline editing, knowledge management and knowledge sharing, uh, sharing of content, and so on. Uh, we also work with software vendors uh, who need to white label our solution, uh, complement their existing offerings, and so on. We have uh, a complete OEM program in place for this. Uh, and uh, we also have a strong entry in the private cloud game and the multi-tenancy and elasticity field. And uh, we have uh, some large clients already who rely on Exo platform for their multi-tenant installations. So let's uh, summarize. Uh, Exo platform is an open source uh, solution. It's a social platform uh, with out-of-the-box collaborative modules. Uh, it's a user experience platform with a user-centric approach. It's also ready to integrate with enterprise class technology and infrastructure. Uh, and you can always customize it and build on it. Uh, and also, it's a standard-based solution. So we comply with open standards. And this is important, of course, to uh, maintain that uh, compatibility and interoperability with third-party systems. Uh, and uh, yeah, that uh, pretty much summarizes what we do in our core business. So in terms of different editions, we have the cloud-based platform. It's a free solution for up to five users. It's hosted in the Amazon cloud environment, uh, completely maintained and hosted by us. Uh, of course, it's a SaaS, software as a service, so there's no extensibility in custom development possible there. It's a, an out-of-the-box, ready-to-use package. Uh, in terms of self-hosted editions, we have the community edition uh, with the RGBL license, and that one can be useful for building proofs of concept, things like that, uh, general evaluation purposes. And then you have the two certified production-ready on-premise solutions, the Express and the Enterprise. Now, looking at the Express, uh, this one is more adapted to SMBs with typically up to 500 users, uh, companies who need a self-hosted, uh, ready-to-go solution with no extensive development going on. Uh, and then we have the Enterprise Edition. Uh, this one is the full value package, you could say, since it comes with uh, enterprise uh, features, advanced features uh, like LDAP, SSO, uh, a powerful IDE included, clustering capability, and so on. And due to the scope of this solution, we also offer uh, professional support services with a guaranteed SLA model. And this includes development and production support. Uh, at Axo, we don't just give you access to uh, the software itself. We have a range of on-demand professional services to help you uh, maximize uh, your, your investment in this uh, great and flexible platform. So along with your express or enterprise subscription of EXO, uh, our consultants can provide you with the knowledge that you need to launch your platform, uh, but also to develop on it. Uh, and they can come on site and work closely with you, with your team, to ensure that the platform answers your specific needs and to guide you through any specific developments uh, that you need. Uh, and we can also provide workshops uh, with your key business users uh, and also things like best practices for change management and uh, and so on. So uh, next we will look quickly at our history, what our presence today looks like, and also some client preferences. Uh, so we started in 2001 as an open source project. In 2003, this project caught the attention of our very first customer uh, who decided to use it. Uh, and this was the US Department of Defense and six years later, we signed a strategic partnership with the open source uh, company Red Hat, and we collaborated on the gating portal project uh, to build the portal framework used today in ExoPath. And it's a very strong portal foundation. In 2012, we got listed in Gartner's Magic Button for horizontal portals, uh, and they recognized us as a user experience platform, uh, a UXP, 
And then in 2012, we uh, launched a successful spin-off called CodeMV, uh, which is the cloud IDE servers. Uh, the IDE Vexo platform uh, improved and provided as a cloud IDE servers targeting developers. And then in recent years, we launched the uh, cloud service, ExoCloud, which is uh, hosted in Amazon. So uh, today we have a worldwide presence uh, with a sustainable and cost-efficient model. Beside the U.S. headquarters, we, had, we have uh, the global operations office in Paris, two regional offices as well in Vietnam and Tunisia, and our team today has people coming from big IT companies like Cisco, Red Hat, HP, and Oracle. Uh, we also rely heavily on a worldwide network of partners. Uh, a very large, large portion of our sales comes through these partners. And these partners are trained and certified in EXO technology, uh, and they can handle EXO projects effectively. Uh, and we are moving toward a more selective model for this. We're thinking quality over quantity and the best value for the end customer. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a nice and active online community today. Uh, it's growing at an accelerated pace. And, uh, we understand the importance of having a strong uh, community uh, that can help our users and provide useful resources. So I invite you to go to community.exoplatform.com, uh, join us, and uh, take advantage of the resources you'll find there. So I will close this presentation by showing you some client references in the industrial and government agency sector. We have, uh, beside the US DOD, we have clients like the NATO, uh, the French Army, the Blue Book Network, and so on. In the tech and telecommunication industry, we have uh, big IT companies like HP, Red Hat, and also telecommunication companies like Orange, Telecom Italia, and others. Uh, looking at the financial sector here, we have references including federal banks like uh, Caixa Bank in Brazil. Uh, they have several projects with us. Uh, we also have private banks like uh, HSBC, BNP Paribas, several insurance companies as well like Generali Group, and also healthcare institutions and health insurance companies like Apria and Humanis. In the public sector, this is uh, a sector that we work with a lot as well. Uh, we have the Belgian Ministry of Finance, the Paraguay Ministry of Finance, the French Presidency, and several others. Uh, we actually have many clients in this field, like uh, city councils, public libraries, ministries, uh, and so on. Uh, finally, we have worked with uh, retailers, e-commerce companies, service providers, like, for example, here, the French uh, Yellow Pages, and also uh, educational institutions like the John Hopkins University, and uh, several institutes around the world, like the Turkish Institute of Statistics. And uh, the general feeling we get from all of these clients is a feeling of satisfaction. They find uh, our solution easy to use. Uh, they find it enterprise ready. Uh, it integrates well with what they already have in place. It's easy to adapt to their different use cases, as you can imagine. And they also find it more accessible uh, and without the type of vendor lock-in that they typically experience with certain vendors, uh, especially large ones. So this uh, concludes my presentation. Um, if you have any, any questions uh, regarding anything mentioned here, feel, feel free to type them in, and I'll address them near the end, uh, as mentioned. So we will begin by showing how you can install Exo Platform uh, on your machine. And the first step is, of course, to go to our community, uh, go to the Downloads page. As you can see here, download the uh, on-premise uh, package of Exo Platform, uh, which you can use for up to 30 days. Uh, you can trial it and test it, play around with it. Uh, so once you download that, you, all you have to do is uh, unzip the package. And the next step is to download the Java JVM, that's the 
virtual machine, Java virtual machine, or the JDK, the uh, Java development kit. Uh, and you will have to then set your uh, envir environment variables. Uh, Exo platform is a Java platform, Java-based uh, web application that uh, that uses the Java uh, virtual machine. So once you install Java, you have to set your uh, environment variable for Java Home and have it point to to the uh, directory of your Java installation, your JDK uh, JDK installation. Uh, and also, you'd have to set your Catalina Home uh, to your uh, Exo Platform directory where you uh, deploy your Exo the Exo Platform package. Uh, so that's for Tomcat, for the Tomcat server. Uh, this one is using the Tomcat server, but we also we can use the JBoss server with the Enterprise Edition. Uh, and uh, you don't have to download and install Tomcat separately since it comes already pre-installed on a Tomcat instance, and you can start using that uh, straight away. So once you do that, uh, all you have to do then is go to your terminal or your command prompt. Of course, you can use the, uh, the Windows command prompt. Uh, this. You can use this, but uh, personally, I prefer another one. But there's nothing wrong with using the other one. So uh, the first step is to have the uh, the terminal point to, to your Exo platform directory. And all you have to do to launch your platform is type start underscore exo dot bat if you're on Windows. If you're on uh, Linux, you have to put sh. Uh, so that's all you have to do. You hit enter and the uh, server will, will start or launch. Uh, so that's it. That's all you have to do to, to basically install Exo Platform and start using it. Uh, you can then go to your browser, uh, go to localhost, uh, the port number is 8080, uh, and that's all. Uh, so the next thing I want to show you is I want to take 15 minutes to uh, do a functional demonstration. And here I'll focus on the out-of-the-box features of Exo Platform. We will run through them one by one. Uh, and here I have a virtual company called Acme. I changed the logo there. I removed the Exo logo and put this virtual company uh, logo called Acme. And in this virtual company, I have four users. This is my own profile. Uh, and I am a project manager in this company. I have also some administrative privileges. Uh, and we also have John. He is the administrator of this uh, platform in this company. He also he has access to the administration back office. We also have Mary. And Mary is HR manager in this company. Uh, also, she has access to contact management. Uh, and finally, we have James. Uh, he is an author with limited uh, permissions in this platform. So for the most part, I will be using uh, my own profile, Marvin, uh, and uh, I'll be switching mostly between this and John for the administration features. But uh, since we will focus on the yellow box features, I'll be mostly using this one. Um, so you already started to, to get a feel of the user experience and the home page, the interface effects of that. Uh, it has a nice interface and it has uh, an intuitive and familiar type of interface, uh, Facebook sort of uh, stream and access to your uh, two features uh, on the right side of the screen, your groups. Uh, but the next platform you have these portlets on the right side. You can, for example, see that uh, here we have uh, uh, this company has deployed the portlet for its project managers to show them a summary of their projects here. Uh, also, Mary, as HR manager, has a mood tracking portlet that she uses here. And uh, we also have this portlet showing news, uh, company news, and uh, a summary of my activities, uh, invitations from other people where you can accept or refuse, uh, and suggestions for people based on the connections uh, that I have in common with them. Uh, and we also have a Who is Online portlet showing you people that are currently uh, connected. Uh, so on the right side of the, of the screen, you will find uh, your home page button, your connections, uh, so you can find people uh, and connect with them uh, within the organization. 
Uh, you also have your wiki application, uh, documents, forums, calendars, and I think that's all, that's all for the, for the out-of-the-box features. This company has added uh, an Acme Expenses Report applications that they integrated into Excel Platform, and they made it available from here, so you can do that as well. Uh, we also added uh, a page for news, uh, company news, and announcements. Uh, and down here you have your spaces. We'll look at them uh, later on. But let's go through the features for now. So the first thing I'll begin with is the user profile. Of course, uh, people can have user profiles and they can update them at any time. So Mary here can access her profile from here. She can click on her uh, name over here and go access her profile. And she can add information, content information, ways to, con to reach her uh, experience. For example, here I'll, I'll add some experience. Um, she works at Acme. Her position is HR manager. Uh, and we'll add some skills. We'll put HR uh, content management, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so she started working a few months ago, and she's still in position. And once we save, let's say that John or I don't know, let's say that John is looking for the HR manager of this company. Uh, he can just go to the search feature here and type HR, and instantly he will get this search result. Uh, so he can uh, go to Mary and uh, basically ask his questions or contact her very easily. So any information we uh, we put in the platform, be it uh, File names, documents, wiki articles, uh, content, web content, uh, skills, job positions, anything, really anything can be uh, easily uh, found using this unified search feature. But it's important to note that this feature can only look for content that you have permission to view. And we will have a brief look into the permission management in Excel platform. It's a strong uh, permission management system due to the nature of some of our clients that we have, uh, like uh, the organization, uh, the uh, government sector, and the banking sector. Uh, so that's uh, just uh, something to keep in mind. So uh, uh, next we will take a look into the wiki application. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I would like to focus more on the activity stream here. It's a very central feature in Excel platform. And the activity stream of Excel platform allows you to uh, make uh, or interact with your uh, colleagues using the social uh, stream and social features like commenting and liking uh, and so on and sharing, uh, microblogging. Uh, but also something that sets the Excel activity stream apart from other social networks, uh, enterprise social networks, is the fact that the Excel activity stream pushes automatic activities uh, from your modules and from your features and, and any any feature that is integrated to it. So you have these uh, modules and features built around the social stream and they can aggregate and push uh, activities to it. And this way people can stay uh, up to date with what's going on in the organization. Uh, and if you, if you do some work, if you uh, uh, can finish an assignment or uh, whatever you do in the organization, you don't have to update uh, your boss. You just uh, an activity will be created automatically, and people can see what's, uh, what you've been uh, what you've been up to. Um, so that's the the idea. For now, I'll, I'll demonstrate the uh, manual way to, to create an activity uh, on the social stream. I can, for example, here say that uh, I can tag somebody. And uh, Mary can go to her homepage and she can see the new posts, she can like, she can also reply. And uh, that's about it. Uh, we, as we, as we uh, demo the, the, the other features of Excel Platform, especially the collaborative features, uh, I will show you how automatic activities uh, are pushed 
to the activity stream uh, and uh, we will get to, to see what that looks like. Uh, so the first uh, of these features that I want to show you today is the wiki application. This one allows you to, to have a knowledge base for your organization and for your company. Uh, but before, before we address that, I would like to mention that you can also have a personal wiki where you can uh, produce uh, notes and your own uh, knowledge base, uh, which is not accessible to, to others. Uh, they, can, they can access it if they can go through your profile, but it's, uh, it's basically your own uh, wiki uh, section. But this one is the global company context, so it will show you the, the uh, overall company wiki. And here uh, you can produce, uh, you can take advantage of this fully featured wiki to produce uh, wiki articles. And you can click on add page and start from whether a template, or you can start, start from scratch. For example, here we have a how-to guide. Let's select that. And you can then uh, start from there and edit it and uh, add whatever you need to add. And for editing, we use uh, the wiki uh, syntax. Click here on the source editor. And we give you some help here now. You can create uh, wiki pages. But also you can uh, uh, create uh, wiki pages using the, the source editor or rich text editing. So then once you have produced your wiki article, people can access it and they can, uh, you can create a permalink for it, you can manage permissions uh, as the person who uh, created this wiki article, and then people can watch this article. That means that every time the, the, the article is updated or uh, edited, they will receive an email notification. You can also view information and export as PDF file. So that's, uh, that's it for the wiki. Uh, the wiki and other features can also access from its base context, which is different from accessing from here, and we will look at that once we look into the spaces feature. So next, the next uh, feature, one of the most powerful features next platform is the document management system. Uh, so here, when you access the documents, documents from, from this context, you will uh, get access to your personal documents, as you can see here, where you can store your own files. Uh, and also you have access to uh, a public folder where you can, which you can use to share documents with your colleagues. So everything you put here will be uh, shareable with your colleagues. That's the idea. Uh, this, this feature also has some, uh, some permission management capabilities uh, and other features uh, that you can take advantage of. Uh, the next, I will also address this feature when, when, from the space context to show you what, uh, how different it is from accessing it from here. Uh, the next feature we have is the forum, uh, and you can have a complete forum application in Nexo platform. Uh, you can start discussions with your colleagues, and you have also uh, uh, sections of the forum relating to the different groups and spaces and communities that you have inside the, uh, the organization. Uh, and this uh, forum application ha is completely, uh, has uh, many features like private messaging, uh, filtering by IP, administration features, moderation, and so on and so forth. And you can do categorizing and bookmarking and so on. So the next one uh, is the calendar application. And when accessed from here, it gives you access to your personal calendar, which you can select from here. Uh, you can also add remote calendars, uh, like Google Calendar, uh, and also, you can manage your events and tasks. So basically, the calendar application includes events, uh, two types of uh, calendar uh, events, uh, including uh, calendar events and also tasks. So it's, uh, it can be used for simple task management. So here I can also see uh, calendar events coming from groups and spaces that I belong to, that I'm a member of. So this is a global view of my calendar, my personal calendar. Uh, in, it can be used to, to, to have to aggregate all uh, your calendars, uh, remote ones, and also uh, your Excel calendars. Uh, so this company has also uh, integrated an external application as well, uh, and we won't be looking into that just to give you an idea. Uh, and this should cover the out-of-the-box features of Excel platform. Another very major feature in Excel is the Spaces feature, and Spaces in Exo are so flexible that you can uh, use them for several dif different uh, use cases. Uh, first of all, we have what we call public spaces, and these are these spaces. This type of space does not require an invitation to join. You can just 
join the space or leave it at will. Uh, for example, here we have the Ask a Colleague space that we set up here. Uh, so people can join. It's an open space. And uh, just to give you an idea on how we can use this, how we can leverage this to, to solve communication problems, for example, uh, I was speaking with my colleague not long ago, and he said that he used to work for a company with about 2,000 uh, employees, and he was in IT, and uh, so he had to, to answer any IT-related questions, and they had a, a, an email list for, set up for that. Uh, as you know, this is used a lot by companies uh, using email lists, uh, and so he would receive uh, about 50 emails per day, and that's pretty much a nightmare. Um, <laughs> it's uh, can get really uh, confusing, and it can clutter your email inbox and can bury any important emails and information there. Uh, so you can overcome this by using the spaces feature, the open spaces feature in Excel. You can create a space like this uh, where people can can go and ask their questions. And, uh, people who can answer questions can, can go there as well and answer questions. And uh, if you don't want to receive notification, you can disable that. You can uh, keep your email inbox clean. Uh, you don't have to, to, to keep uh, getting uh, notifications. If you're not interested, uh, you can just leave the space. Uh, if you don't have questions, if you're not interested in participating here, you can just leave. Uh, you don't have to, to remain there and uh, keep getting those emails. So that's just a simple example of what you can do. Uh, we also have uh, spaces that you'd have to request to join. Uh, we can use these for, for example, company departments here, uh, human resources. Uh, and the third type of space uh, that is very uh, that is used a lot by, by our clients is the project space. And you can use spaces and expert uh, to manage projects to have a private uh, a private uh, area where people can collaborate around a specific goal or project. Uh, or idea, and they can share files and access to different documents and collaborate uh, closely uh, and in a dedicated and separate environment. Uh, a fourth type of space that you don't see here is uh, invisible. Uh, and you can, for example, if you have a, an executive board that wants to have a private space where they will put very sensitive information that shouldn't be uh, accessed by anyone, they can create an invisible space that I can even see here. Uh, only uh, people with the right permissions can access. So that's also possible in Excel platform. So here I'll take the uh, project space uh, as an example. Uh, so I'm project, project manager in this company. I'm uh, the manager of this space. And since I am the one who created this space and I am the manager, I also have access to the space settings. And in the space settings, I can add or remove applications. You can see here that we have uh, access to pretty much all of the applications, the out-of-the-box applications that Excel has to offer, but this time from a space context, they are dedicated to this particular space. Uh, and also we have here portlets uh, that uh, we have deployed in this space. As the manager of this space, I have deployed, uh, and you can add or remove uh, portlets as well. So let's pick one of these uh, applications. We will go to the documents repository of this space. And here you will see uh, documents that were, that were shared and that are only visible to mem members uh, of this space. Uh, so in this area, you can pretty much upload your documents. We will try to upload the document here. Uh, so we are collaborating in this space uh, around the project of implementing a social internet. So we are sharing documents relevant to this, to this project. And once I upload the documents, uh, James, who is a member of this space, can uh, can go here, and he can see that an activity has been created uh, that I have uploaded a document uh, to this space. So that's an example of an automatic uh, activity generated automatically uh, by the EXO activity stream. So I'll go back here. Uh, I also want to show you how you can uh, create sub areas and spaces. Uh, so you can, for example, create a folder here, manager area. And I only want to make this accessible to people who are managers inside this space. So all I have to do is go here and uh, set the permissions. Now, you will always see this permissions button uh, pretty much Whenever any content or document or application or portlet 
is involved in, in next platform. Uh, this is something that, uh, again, is important in our solution. You can uh, define permissions uh, depending on roles of users, groups, uh, specific people, and so on. So here I can simply remove uh, members of this space, the social intranet space, and I will leave the administrators and myself. I will close and I'll go ahead and share a file here inside this folder. And when I go back to the activity stream, I will see an activity generated automatically. But when James goes here and refreshes the base, he will not see uh, the, the document. He will not have access to that document. And when he goes to the uh, document spaces, document repository, he will not even see that the folder exists. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, the, the idea. So also we have uh, a wiki uh, feature here uh, available for this space where people can uh, have a knowledge base uh, for their project. Uh, they also have an agenda for this project, for this space, where they can add events uh, and tasks and delegate tasks and things like that. Uh, we also have an answers application and a frequently asked questions. Uh, and also you can see the members uh, inside the space. So that's uh, pretty much it for the spaces uh, feature of Excel platform. Uh, so the next thing I want to show you is how you can extend Excel platform. Excel is very extensible, and today I'm picking uh, one of the most straightforward ways to uh, extend, add, extend, extend the platform, add more uh, features and capabilities. Uh, we have a catalog of online add-ons uh, available in our community today. Uh, and anyone can create an add-on and contribute and add uh, an add-on to, to the existing ones. Uh, several of our clients created their own add-ons and plugins. Um, they don't always share them uh, with the community, but we do encourage everyone to, to share add-ons. Uh, for example, you can see here that the French Geo pages has uh, contributed to it has shared this add-on, uh, and anyone can do the same. Uh, and basically, uh, you can download the add-on uh, and deploy it manually, but uh, today we have an add-on manager. We have created an add-on manager uh, as one of several tools that we are adding to make the administrator life easier. Uh, and this add-on manager allows you to, to access this catalog from a terminal and install add-ons, remove add-ons, and so on and so forth. So let's look at that. So once I'm uh, inside uh, my platform folder, all I have to do is type add-on and hit enter. And here I will see the, uh, the add-on manager and I'll see the commands that I can use. So let's use one of these commands. It's add-on list. And this will show me, basically it will give me access to the catalog of add-ons that are available and show me a list of uh, add-ons that I can download and install. Uh, so we have, you see here, uh, list of add-ons, and one of my favorite add-ons is the chat add-on, which I'll show you now uh, how, can, how you can uh, install it and use it. So this uh, add-on will be uh, installed this way. You, all you have to do is type add-on, install, Excel, and basically type the add-on name, and then hit enter and it will be installed. And then we'd have to restart your server and it will be available. Uh, and let me just demonstrate to you this great uh, example of an add-on, uh, the chat add-on. Uh, basically, this allows you to have real-time communications uh, with one of your colleagues. All you have to do uh, is uh, wait for it to load. I can just switch to John. So uh, as John, once I hover over any user, I see a button where it allows you to have a one-to-one -one chat with anyone inside the platform. So once I type that, I will get a not notification here. John sent me a message to speak here and reply. And that's it. 
I can also switch to full context mode, minimize this. Uh, it's a very damp, familiar type of uh, experience, which we also like to keep in Excel Platform. Uh, and you, you can also have uh, group chats and chats with people uh, that you are collaborating with. For example, here uh, in the context of the uh, social internet project, this product that, uh, that I have here, uh, when you go here, you will see this button added once you install the chat add-on, allowing you to have uh, group communication. And once you type a message here, everyone will be notified, they will see your message, and they will be able to interact with you uh, in real time. So, as you can see here, everyone has received, uh, can see this uh, discussion going on. And I can switch to full context mode and basically start the meeting. And once you switch the full context mode of the chat, you will see that uh, you will have access to more features uh, in this uh, nice chat application. Uh, you can uh, chat with people. Uh, one, you, have, you can have one-to-one -one private discussions here, but you can uh, have team discussions here. So here on the social internet uh, product discussion. And from here, I can basically uh, start a meeting. All I have to do is click here, and it will start a meeting. Uh, and I can basically chat with my colleagues, I can add events, uh, review, uh, it will be for Friday, and it will last all day, and uh, and that's it. So now, this uh, basically will create uh, an event in my groups uh, calendar. And I'll be able to, to see that event also from my personal calendar. So another thing that I can do is I can assign tasks from here uh, without leaving the meeting. Uh, I can, for example, assign a task to uh, connect this to Marvin. So I'll assign a task to John. Uh, and it's due for Friday morning. Okay. And a task will be added to John's calendar, uh, and he can access it and uh, set the status of this task to completion uh, and other features. Uh, I can also upload files very easily. Uh, I can drag and drop files from my, uh, from my computer. It will be uploaded. And... Uh, I can also uh, ask a question and so on and so forth. Uh, so basically, once I'm done, all I have to do uh, is click on stop here. Uh, I will drag it to add some, some messages here just for demonstration's sake. So I'll go ahead and type in some messages. And uh, that's pretty much pretty much all. Once I'm finished, I can, like I said, start the meeting. And once I do that, uh, a meeting notes uh, will be created automatically inside the wiki uh, of this product, of this group, of this space. Uh, so I can save as a wiki article. And everyone can then uh, see this meeting notes. And this meeting notes will allow you to basically have uh, a summary of the meeting. You can see files that were shared, and you can have access to those files. Uh, as you know, if you, if these collaborators used a third-party uh, meeting, uh, third-party chat application. Chances are that if they uploaded the file during the meeting, and someone missed 
the meeting, like uh, James here, uh, he did not attend the meeting, he will not be able to recover that file once the meeting is open. This is different, uh, you can always access information and content shared during the meeting without losing anything. It would be uploaded in the server and kept private and accessible to members of this project. Uh, you can also see a list of tasks assigned, uh, task assignee and due date, and also you can see a discussion. Uh, you don't have to go to the chat and keep the chat uh, window and keep uh, scrolling until you find the the, uh, the discussion. You can access it from here in a very organized way. Uh, so that's it. Uh, basically, this can be used to improve real-time collaboration in the company, especially as far as projects uh, and uh, private groups are concerned. Uh, and I hope that was helpful. Uh, another add-on that uh, I'd like to show you very quickly here is the Cloud Drive add-on. And in order to be able to show you that, I have to go to the document um, repository. And this add-on allows you to connect to any remote CMIS compliant repository. Uh, this includes Google Drive and several others. So you will have a button added here, and you can connect to your box.com account. You can connect to your Google Drive. You can connect to any CMIS uh, compliant repository using this. Uh, and you will have a folder added where you can access your documents uh, without leaving extra platform. And it's a, it's a really useful and a, a really uh, convenient way to access uh, contents remotely and uh, securely. So that's uh, another add-on that you can install. You'll find it in the add-on center, and you can install it just like I showed you. Uh, you, can, you should remember that you can also extend EXO uh, in different ways. You're not limited to these add-ons, but today I wanted to uh, uh, talk about the add-ons, the community add-ons, and how you can leverage those to, to extend your platform. So. Uh, the next thing I want to show you very quickly before we switch to the questions uh, is how you can modify the layout, the platform's layout. And as an administrator, you have access to the uh, layout editor or the UI composer. So if I go to the page context as opposed to the site context and click on edit layout, I will be able to manipulate and move around the portlets uh, deployed in, the, in that specific page. Uh, I can add other other portals and applications uh, inside my platform, and uh, I can remove uh, applications as well. Uh, I can also do the same for the site from the site context. I can move things around and edit uh, and compose my UI. And this is a non-intrusive way to, to edit your platform's UI. I can also uh, edit my navigation, my right. Uh, left side navigation here by adding pages and notes uh, to the list of ones existing or I can uh, uh, set uh, permissions or set visibility of specific notes uh, and like I said everything everything falls under permission management in Excel platforms. For example uh, if you got uh, James here I don't know if you noticed but he doesn't have, have access to microblogging in the platform and that was intentional. The uh, administrator of this platform decided that James doesn't need that feature so he made it invisible to him, and he cannot use that feature. So this applies to any feature in any content in any portlet, uh, an application existing in Excel. Uh, in terms of uh, non-intrusive uh, editing of the layout, we also provide branding capability. You can change the, your logo and also the color of the uh, upper toolbar here. But uh, you can also uh, skin your platform. Uh, from inside the platform, it's possible, uh, and also you can do that through the extension uh, mechanism in Excel Platform. You can create a skin extension, and for this, you will need to be uh, uh, to be knowledgeable in CSS to have uh, some CSS knowledge and the ability to create uh, Excel Platform extensions. So those are the prerequisites. But it's possible to create completely new skins for Excel and to uh, manipulate the layout in any way you want. It's very flexible. Uh, I'm going to note quickly here that for the uh, Excel Platform skin, uh, it's, we trust that it's, uh, it's uh, uh, 
a, an interface that, that our clients seem to like very much. And, uh, but uh, we, we want to keep uh, the ability to, to, to be able to, to edit this. And for this, we offer uh, user experience guidelines available in our documentation center. Uh, by the way, if you need any documentation on ExoPlatform, go to docs.exoplatform.com. You'll be able to access our documentation for users, for developers, for administrators, and other references, reference guides. So under developers, you'll find UX guidelines. And here we give some, uh, some guidelines and best practices on how to keep uh, a cohesive experience uh, when creating uh, a theme or a skin for your Exo platform portals and applications that you integrate in Exo and the platform itself. Uh, and as I can note that uh, the Exo platform skin uses the Twitter Bootstrap. It's based on the Twitter Bootstrap to create its great design, but uh, it's a customized, uh, a customized edition of, uh, or version of uh, the Twitter Bootstrap. It's not the Twitter Bootstrap itself. It's based on the Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, so we leverage that. Uh, so that's all for this uh, functional demonstration. I hope it was useful. Uh, the next uh, segment of this webinar is, of course, uh, questions. I want to have a look at your questions and see how I can help you uh, learn more about Excel Platform. So here we have Sonia. She, she uh, wants to know if he if you have any partners in Portugal. I don't know if you have a partner in Portugal. I know we have a partner in Brazil, uh, I think in Spain as well. I'm not sure Portugal, I don't know. Uh, you would have to contact our sales team for that and ask them. Uh, and to do that, just go to our website at www.exoplatform.com. Go to the contact us page and drop us a message and we'll be happy to, to answer that. Um, Sonia also wanted to know if he are using the ExoCloud version. Uh, and, uh, they are using the ExoCloud version. We couldn't find the chat. Is it available in that version? Uh, Sonia, if you go to the features page on our website, you will notice a page dealing with add-ons over here. So if you click on that, let's see if chat is available. Uh, so we have chat and video call. All right. Uh, actually, the chat add-on is available for the on-premise edition of Excel platform, but it's coming soon for Excel Cloud. As you can see, here, it will be available for free for Excel Cloud customers, and it's coming soon. So. Uh, I don't think that we have an ETA, uh, an estimated release date for that, uh, but uh, I don't expect it to, to be uh, to be uh, too long, to take too long to, to be released for ExoCloud, since uh, the video call add-on has been already released for ExoCloud, and you can use that already. Uh, but uh, that one, the video call add-on, is not uh, is not a free service. We provide it through our partner Sitecall. They provide this technology. Uh, so you'd have to, to get a license uh, from Sitecall, and we have pricings available already. Uh, and it's available on Excel Cloud, and you can try it. I think if you ask for a 30-day trial with this add-on, they will be happy to provide you with that. Just tell them that you came from Excel Platform uh, and you need a 30-day trial. So any uh, any other questions? Uh, what you see here is our online community, the Exo Tribe. I highly recommend that you uh, join this uh, community, not only because of the great resources that it has, but also because it's based on Exo Platform. So it will be a, a good chance to, uh, to get to know the platform and to, to see what it looks like in a real time and a real world environment populated with users and data and so on. Uh, it's a really uh, useful resource. No, 
know, other questions? I'll take that as a good sign. <laughs> Okay, so I, I guess that's it. Uh, I hope that was useful. Uh, today we at Exo Platform are happy to offer you this powerful out-of-the-box platform. Uh, we have seen uh, how you can access and use uh, the different out-of-the-box features in Exo Platform. Uh, we, ha we have also seen how you can extend it using the Exo add-ons, how you can uh, customize the UI of Exo Platform, uh, and it's a, it's a platform that comes with such a great underlying value, uh, and that value is how much control it gives you. And there's just so much that you can do with it, and you can have impressive results and uh, features to take it to that level. And I've seen some amazing case studies myself. Uh, and that's what I personally love about Exo Platform, the freedom and the value that it comes with. So if you are interested in using Exo to power your next project, please feel free to Go ahead and contact us, and uh, we'll be happy to help you make it happen. Just go to our website, drop us a message, and we will take it from there. And also, as mentioned, feel free to join our com community and uh, communicate with us there and access any resources, ask your questions. So thank you again for taking part, and I hope to speak to you again real soon.